The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 06 a.m. Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have all the markets somewhat we're fl near flat right now. Tech stocks in the green, NASDAQ 100 positive by five points. After all, the markets were pretty far into the red. We'll start things off with the S&P. Right now, you're negative by two points, but check out where we were overnight. You had a low at about 3 a.m. Eastern time, 44.85. We catch a couple bids right at 70.45. We accelerate higher as well. We have an ECB meeting going on out there. Christine Lagarde, she was speaking coming up uh, to this program, but S&P is negative by two. Check out the NASDAQ 100. Lows intraday yesterday, 15,523. You actually trade to a low 15,546. You're up 80 points above where you, where you were at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. And you see, again, 745 catching a little bit of a bid. Dow down just 17 points. But, man, you're talking about 200 points above where we were overnight. Things looking a little dicey at about 3 a.m. Eastern time last night in the Russell 22 points above where you're at last night, 22 points in the Russell. That's almost a full percent. You trade down and up within about two points of the close yesterday. Crude backing off a bit. There's your acceleration on crude from 69.80. We were just actually below $68. We're trading at 68.18. Natural gas down two pennies right now. Look at that pop of natural gas yesterday, though. Above 501. We're trading at 489. You get the gold contract right now. Positive three dollars. Gold reaches seventeen eighty three yesterday. We were actually above eighteen hundred early this morning. We're trading at seventeen ninety seven. Gold's got some volatility there. Speaking of volatility, Bitcoin forty seven thousand ninety five. Quite the sell off on Tuesday. We chop around yesterday. Today, actually above just now, anywhere we were yesterday, backing it up to almost Tuesday night. There's your acceleration of Bitcoin. I mean, you talk about volatility, man. These are fifteen minute bars. At 8.45, you were just trading at 45,745. You're up above 1,300 bucks in the last, uh, what, 20 minutes or so? You jump to gold, as we said, up $3, and we'll jump to notes and bonds. Pretty calm action right now. You get the 10-year negative one tick. You got the 30-year positive one tick, and we'll jump over to the VIX. With some negative action last night, we had a VIX spiking to pretty much the consistent highs, whether it was overnight Tuesday, the highs of Wednesday, the highs overnight last night. You're talking about 1950. The highs on the volatility index. We're trading at 1816 right now. We got about 21 minutes to go till the start of trading. Jumping around to some of the equities we got making moves. Uh, before we do, let's take we got some moves this morning, folks. All right, Lululemon. Talk about crushing it out of the park. You're positive $52 right now in the open, trading at $432.50. Athleisure is here to stay, folks, in a big way. Now, look at this. There's your three-year weekly. Okay, we got an all-time high of 417.85. I believe that's an all-time high. Yeah, this thing's just been on fire. So 2020 in September, you make it up. Look at that high. 399.90. The high, we make it above there, 417.85 for some context. We put it back to the three year weekly. You're going to open at about 432. We're going to print an all time high on restoration hardware. Before we get into the numbers, I'm just going to pull up all the stops, stocks for the action first. GameStop, not living up to expectations last night. They are down about $20. Interesting, though, a lot of volatility. The cool part about doing this program before the market opens on some of the earnings is you can jump over to uh, the Analyze tab. And you can see what these were basically trading at. You're talking about GameStop pricing in a $27 move as of the close last night. So not even living up to the expectations. You got about a $20 move right now. If you were selling volatility in either direction there, uh, you'd be making money as you would have gotten about a $27 move priced in. As of the open, at least, you're only talking about a $20 move to the south. We talked about Lulu. Now, Lulu, way over the expected move. You're talking about $52. The move was only $17 and change. We got Restoration Hardware catching a bid as well. Now, Restoration Hardware is up 32 bucks. They had a $50 move priced in. A little bit of volatility. They have some strong numbers as well out there. And 
And not on the earnings front, but man, Sam Adams, Boston Beer, watch out. Now, they're not going to have an expected move because they don't have earnings going on. But man, they got to move last night because they pulled their guidance and they have some big numbers. And you're talking about the hard seltzer uh, trend, not quite living up to expectations. There's your drop from 560. We're down about 50 bucks. You're talking about a 9 to 10 percent drop last night. We hit 500 on the dot on the news that they're pulling their guidance. And I'm just going to pull up here to kind of read these numbers. We're going to start the program off with a little Sam Adams because, man, be careful in this equity. And before we take a look at it, just for some context, talk about a parabolic move, right? We're going to open at about 500. You're coming back to, you know, this area. Basically, you're talking about June of last year. You take back 15 months. You trade from 500 up to 1350, and we're going to be back to 500, all within the span of less than a year and a half. Uh, and, boy, you better watch out because so what happened here is that because I remember when they came out with these earnings. I mean, you were just trading at 960. You were just trading at 1,000 in June of this year. You're going to get cut in half in less than three months. You really fall out of bed when they came out with their numbers. Look at that bar. That's a weekly bar, and it goes from 960 to under 700. You're talking about almost a $270 drop, and things just keep dropping from there, okay? But check out these numbers. Now, when they came out with these numbers in July, what had happened was is they had revised their numbers upward, of course, leading into this acceleration, and then they basically had to pull back all the expectations they had. Now they get into it. Here's some of the news um, out here. And what they talk about is, here's the one I want to talk about. Industry reports have estimated, they're talking about the entire market for hard seltzer is not what they thought. Not just what Boston Beer might be getting with their brand, the entire market. Now their brand is the truly hard seltzer product, okay? Um, but man, when you look at where we were, yeah, 1349 in April. I know, remarkable. Uh, you're talking about industry reports have estimated that the full year 2021 volume for the hard seltzer market retail sales will have over 100 million fewer cases than the volumes estimated in May of this year. Now, to show you where we were in May, there's your, your, your numbers you're looking at. That's when they were guiding up in a big way. They were at 1350, okay? So 100 million fewer then the volume estimates in May of 2021, they got revised downward in July, but it's still over 30 million fewer cases than the volumes estimated in July. So they had a huge haircut from May to July. Now it's September, and they're saying basically at this point, um, as a result, Boston Beer executives completely revoked the financial guidance they amended in July. Now, the July was already a revision downward. OK, they obviously didn't revise downward enough. That's what has the market really freaked out. And uh, while admitting that the full year earnings are now expected to come in lower than the $18 a share bottom of the revised forecast. Now, they had revised that dramatically downward as well the last time that they came out with their numbers. Um, yeah. So watch out for that stock. Not sure where that drops. A lot of the value in that equity was priced off the huge acceleration in hard seltzer and truly having a great spot in that hard seltzer market. But it looks like hard seltzer. Uh, it's not the summer of hard seltzer that Sam Adams was at least hoping for. Really falling out of bed on that one. And you can see, I mean, where we're going next, I mean, 400 is totally in play here. As this thing just chopped around 400 between about July of 2019 to where COVID began when we're sitting about 389 that are there about you make it down to a low of 290. Um, but when you get that kind of max pain and you got executives pulling guidance and they can't even figure out anywhere in terms of where to guide down because the market just keeps disappearing with the key there is that was their growth sector. That was the multiples that they were getting because the market was supposed to be exploding. Not so much. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. 
Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by two. NASDAQ 100 positive by nine points right now. Dow negative by 21. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, live at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market with Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trades in that option market with defined risk. Kevin Hinks, happy Thursday. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Tommy, I'm going to start this conversation off with really good news. I found the missing jobs from last week's uh, non-farm payroll data. It just so happens they're sitting over in the queue in uh, jolts waiting to be picked up by Americans. <laughs> So we found Gotta the jobs, it. Tommy. They, 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 they just haven't been accepted yet. <laughs> it's pretty wild, man. It sure is. And we get an unemployment number that's pretty slow this morning in terms of a low number there. Uh, markets clawing back some of the losses we had last night, Kevin. We got the ECB out there. They're going to be trimming some of their uh, bond purchases or asset purchases out there as they seem to see that recovery on par with what they're looking for. Uh, quite the resurgence from the overnight in terms of thing. Uh, happened to be up. I got a young son in the house. He was up last night. I was up at 3 in the morning. I said, oh, man, well, this should be an exciting thing. Thursday. Shame on me, Kevin. Of course, they're going to buy that dip overnight, but pretty resilient market um, on these dips. But man, we're dipping a little bit. But uh, resiliency, at least overnight, as we come back to the open, we're pretty much flat across the board after some dicey action last night. Yeah, it's boring to when you're looking at financial markets to talk semantics. But Christine Lagarde came out this morning, talked really positively about the ECB economy, but did not say they're tapering. All they're doing is incrementally lowering their asset purchases from $80 okay. billion to $70 billion, with no promises of going lower. However, I think it's just semantics, Tommy. I think they – it's just – I thought it was very ironic that, of all places, the ECB is the one starting to look to, to decrease the asset purchases and not the U.S. So, yeah, ECB jumping the gun on the U.S. and starting to um, decrease their purchases before we do. That's I listen. That same thing hit me. I said, wait a second. I thought, you know, 
in the U.S. We're fortunate. We're still, you know, fighting that vaccine battle, but we're fortunate to have so so many vaccines available, and we do have a wave right now. But the companies seem to be doing so well. Europe's lagging a little bit, but obviously not that much. Again, my opinion there. Um, but we got some stocks rocking this morning with earnings, man. That's for sure. Uh, I was talking about Sam Adams, man. That hard seltzer market. Uh, that's not earnings, but they're guiding down in a big way. Just pulled their guidance, but Lululemon crushing it out of the park. Remarkable that stock. How resilient it is. Athleisure is here to stay, man. Up 52 bucks to an all-time high. Uh, what are you looking at in the market, Kevin? Some pretty surprising moves on these earnings as they trickle through towards the end of the, the quarter. Yeah, exactly. Just another uh, bit of look at the retail apparel sector. And Lululemon, that is ridiculous, the numbers that they came out with and the action on the, on the stock. So, But here's what we did. Yesterday on Fast Market, as you know, we covered Lululemon. And we traded it based on a move in either direction. But then later in the, in the day, we covered Nike. We covered Under Armour, knowing that because, because of Lululemon's earnings, Nike had a one-day expected move, and so did Under Armour. So not only do you have Lululemon up, but you've got Nike up $3.5 to start the day. Because if Lululemon's doing well, Probably Nike is doing it well, and they come out with earnings at the end of the month, as you know, Tommy. So there's opportunities in not only the name that's coming out with earnings, but those affiliated names as well, Tommy. And uh, and Restoration Hardware trading higher as well from 672. We're pushing above 700. Um, you know, they've succeeded so well over the last year and a half with home decor and home uh, furnishings, et cetera. And that market looks to be still accelerating at least for restoration uh as well gamestop kevin the one actually disappointing surprise surprise down about 15 20 bucks not even up to living up to the expected move though um you know to quite an expected move 27 dollar move on a about an 198 dollar stock 20 dollar move but gamestop trained a little bit lower on their numbers uh not too surprising i guess lacking the fundamentals uh as that company has over some time well it's thursday kevin it's a short week can't believe it's thursday already but uh, we got two days left in the trading week. What are you guys going to be talking about coming up on the show today? Well, Lightfoot is going to do a presentation on Kroger. They come out with earnings tomorrow morning. And then we'll look at the, the buy now, pay later firm, a firm that, uh, remember, they just struck a deal with uh, Amazon. And these deals, buy now, pay later, is becoming the new trend in all this payment space. So we're going to look at a firm. And then we'll look at Zscaler. In, in the final segment. So a full show of some interesting names today, but Kroger in the middle section where like Folio will do a presentation, Tommy. Kroger, really interesting, Kevin. Do you remember when um, Amazon purchased Whole Foods and, and all of these grocery stores just went into the tank, man, um, thinking they were going to take over? We got Kroger trading. Uh, is that an all-time? Where are we? Let's, I'm pulling up the chart on the Thinkorswim platform, man. Yeah, we're talking about all-time highs at 48 bucks basically this morning going into their numbers. Uh, groceries doing pretty well. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. We look forward to the show as always at 11 o'clock. We'll be watching. You have yourself a great day, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. My pleasure. You too, Kevin. Folks, tune in every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern time. You heard what they'll be talking about. They had an outstanding conversation uh, yesterday about some of the equities they talked about, whether it was Lululemon and jumping over to Lululemon, taking a look at the move. So holding it about 432. We're up $52 on their numbers, remarkable numbers. Uh, and let's get into the numbers as we take a look in terms of Lulu. Earnings beat hiked outlook as shoppers spend on workout apparel. Uh Style changes, you know, human um, tendencies changes, athleisure is here to stay, and they are on the forefront of that industry. Uh, based on the current forecast, Lulu's on track to surpass its 2023 revenue target by the end of this year. Did you hear that? Two years ahead of schedule, and they had some lofty numbers to, to do that, folks. In its fiscal second quarter, sales in North America rose 63% year over year and up 49% internationally. Growing a company of this size, those statistics, um, remarkable. Now that's year over year. We got some weird stats we're dealing with last year, but still remarkable because they were still doing business um, a year ago. You're talking about 1.45 billion. Market was only looking for 1.34 on a percentage basis. That's a huge beat. Net income rising to 208 million. That's up from 86 million a year ago, excluding one-time items. You're talking about a buck 65 a share and the market was only looking for a buck 19. Um, our performance in Q2 was driven by a strong response to our product offering, improve 
improving productivity in our stores and sustained strength in e-commerce. Uh, on a two-year basis, here we go. Lululemon reported its women biz women's business grew 26%. Now that's the, the big part of their business. They're still, and men's was up 31%. 26% from two years ago is a staggering number when you think about the numbers they were already dealing with. Uh, it did not, however, break out sales of the mirror products during the last quarter. That's their exercise equipment. It currently has mini mirror shops in 150 Lulu stores and will ramp that up to 200 before the holidays. Uh, big numbers in a big way, and they're going to benefit today. And uh, as I mentioned, you're only talking about a $17 move. I mean, for some context here, you pull up the options expiring tomorrow. Now, this thing was trading at 380 remember. You pull up 380 and you're basically talking. You would have gotten uh, an at-the-money put or call for about 10 bucks, and you're pushing 53 bucks on the open this morning to the upside. Now, you would have had to be bullish. You know, but you could have gotten both sides by about $20 to expiration on Friday. Big move, nonetheless. And uh, yeah, you're going to see it open. It's even accelerating higher. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for the open. We got the S&Ps negative by two coming into that open. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps negative by two. NASDAQ 100 barely in the positive by 11. Dow in the red by about nine points. Dow had been 200 plus points below.
lower trading at right now. You're back above 35,000. The Russell barely in the red by about four points right now. Jumping around to what else we got going on. Uh, NFL names Verizon, 5G partner and 10-year deal, promising enhanced fan experiences at stadiums. I bring it up because football is back tonight, folks. You have the Dallas Cowboys at the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll always be a Patriots fan, but I've been living in Tampa for 15, 16 years now. Pretty cool that Tom Brady gets to come play here. He gets a Super Bowl here. Remarkable. Uh, the GOAT, as they say. But football kicking off tonight uh, with Dallas coming into Tampa. Tampa, an eight and a half point favorite, I believe, in that game as the NFL kicks off tonight. Jumping over to the fundamental news we got this morning, a little bit of a headline number, 310,000, uh, another new pandemic low. So in a healthy economy, you're always going to see, not always, but you would see in a healthy economy, 200, 250,000 jobs, weekly jobless claims on a weekly basis, just the healthy churn of people going through, whether it's a variety of jobs, losing one job, moving to the next. Uh, the estimate was about 335,000. These numbers are really not that important to me. There's a lot of variance in them, and they're pretty close to the estimations. And when you're talking about 10 to 20,000 jobs on a weekly basis, when we're dealing with 8 to 9 million potentially that we should make up to reach pre-pandemic levels, which I don't think we're going to make up, there's going to be a huge chunk of those people that are somehow making decisions that it's not worth it in their life, whatever the situation, to maybe come into the workforce in that capacity, maybe not to come in yet. Um, I just don't see eight or nine million jobs coming back to get to that level. Nonetheless, 310,000 was the headline number this morning. All right, jumping around to other stories we have going on. We talked about Lulu numbers, GameStop shares. Let's see how they're trading on the open this morning, GME. Basically, where we were coming in, you're down about 9%. Now, getting into what they had talked about, extending trading, second quarter loss narrowed on a year-over-year -year basis. And here's the key. The retailer did not provide an outlook for the coming quarters or take questions during its earnings conference call. And you know what? Good for that CEO. Now, they're paying the price today by about 9%. Um, but they're managing their company, I would say, in the capacity that they they probably best can. This stock has no business being at $180. It had no business being at $200. It's, uh, it's living on a dream and a prayer. You know, the valuations of this company make no sense from a fundamental perspective. We're talking about a $13.4 billion company, GameStop, which, yes, is in a huge transformation. And I'm sure the new uh, Chairman Cohen has a plan for it. But that plan is not driven by revenue and earnings as of yet. It's driven, driven by a plan. Now they have secured tons of capital by selling shares into the public uh, at some of these lofty valuations, but why not? Um, this stock is being driven up here by almost a cult following. If you're being driven up here by a cult following, yes, you're gonna pay a price, you're down 9%, but maybe the price would be more if you tried to provide an actual outlook of where things may be and took questions. Just something to consider. Um, you're playing with fire over in these shares uh, anyway. You know, you're up 957% year to date. Uh, for the quarter in July 31st, net loss, $61 million. Uh, in the year earlier period, they had a net loss of 111. Uh, you know, not even worth mentioning, basically. We all can kind of grasp that the fundamentals don't match up. It's just all about maybe uh, the Reddit, Wall Street bets, or retail traders believing in a possible future. Okay, let's see what else we got going on. All right, Amazon, why not? I got some Amazon in my account for retirement. Seems like every day we get an Amazon story, right? Yesterday, uh, the story was that Whole Foods, they're doing a couple more stores cashierless. That's gonna be the future there. Now they're gonna be selling TVs. It makes sense, the Fire Stick is everywhere already. I got Roku's in my house, but Fire Sticks are everywhere. But Amazon announced its first Amazon branded TV sets. Two families of models will be available in various sizes. Amazon Fire TV Omni Series and the more affordable Amazon Amazon Fire TV 4 series. So they're going to have two levels, right? More um, affordable basic level and then your higher end level. Uh, needed to build its own set in order to better integrate its Fire TV software with Alexa voice controls. They're just getting into everything, folks, in a big way. Uh, you jump over to Amazon. Amazon up half a percent, 3546. Not necessarily on that news, I would imagine, but trading higher was all the all the markets catching a bit. Look at this. NASDAQ 100 up 33, Dow up 28, and the S&P is now catching a bit up three points as well. We jump over to the VIX as the market jumps higher. VIX now under 18. All right, continuing to jump down the line of stories we got this morning. So we talked about Lululemon. We talked about GameStop, Boston Beer, Restoration Hardware. Let's see their 
how they're trading. They were higher. Uh, beat estimates by two bucks a share. Quarterly earnings of 848. They said it continues to see elevated demand from consumers spending more time at home. That's the question, right? Some of these stocks have benefited so much with the pandemic and the lockdowns. We jump open to, over to Restoration Hardware. Uh, yeah, and you're up 3.7%, giving back a little on the open, but still relatively where we were as about 9 a.m. on their numbers. We continue to jump down the line. Uh, United trimmed its outlook due to the surge in COVID-19 cases. Not what you want to see for travel that's cutting into passenger demand. Uh, United is adjusting its uh, capacity and response. So it said the current trends continue. It reported an adjusted fourth quarter loss. Uh, they're a little bit lower. We'll pull them up in a moment. But all the airlines going to trade lower on that news. And there's your acceleration of lower prices. And you actually catch a bid. On the open, we're up six tenths percent from American Delta Airlines up eight tenths percent right now. United up four tenths percent. We jump to the cruise lines, a little bit of a pop as well. Carnival up about three tenths right now. Airbnb, this thing has been on a little bit of a run from 130. Check this out, right? Uh, I think they go public reference price or go public at 140 or 150, somewhere in there. Uh, you make it down to 130 twice. This is why, folks, you know, you ever get an area where you, you know, you have a, an area of support or resistance. This area at 130. You're close to that level on their IPO, but just where we went to, I mean, you got quite a pop back here back in May, right? You make it all the way up to a price of 157. That would have been a nice entry there. You set your stop somewhere beneath it. You don't pop, you don't pop, right? You're wrong. Uh, you do get an acceleration, and man, what are you up, 25% since that 130 price point? You really get an acceleration back on August 24th. Uh, this morning, you're down 1.4% with the travel stocks being revised slightly downward. All right, jumping down the line, Caesars, they struck a deal to sell the non-U.S. assets of its William Hill sports betting unit to British gambling firm 888 Holdings for about $3 billion. Um, William Hill, one of the big sports books over there, over in Britain, uh, $3 billion. And what else we got down the line? Macy's, they were positive this morning after Cohen upgraded them to an outperform, noting better inventory and pricing management, as well as robust digital strategy. So not exactly talking about the entire sector there, just talking about Macy's, you're up 1.8% on that. Let's jump back some of the companies that were moving, see how they are moving. Lulu, holding on to most of those gains this morning, you're up 12.5% on their numbers, up 48 bucks on the open. Restoration Hardware, up 32 bucks on the open right now, up 4.9%. GameStop shares down 8.2%, down about 16 bucks. They had about a $27 move priced in. And we'll check back to Boston Beer, catching a little bit of a bid on the open, still down about 6.8%. And as I said, going over this in the beginning of the show, uh, if that's not a definition of a falling knife, what is, folks? All right, red across the board since their last earnings on July 19. Now, it's only six weeks later, and already they have to revise greatly downward from the estimations they had in July, let alone those had been revised downward. So obviously they didn't make the revision they needed to in July. Maybe that could be what's going on here as well as they pull the guidance completely. Uh, markets, though, positive territory. SPs up 8 and NASDAQ up 43. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. All the markets in the green. We got the NASDAQ up 40 points, S&P up about seven points right now. Jumping over on my favorite stocks. Uh, got this in my newsletter from early on. Quite a pop that we got the last couple days on Disney. Gives it back a little bit yesterday. The acceleration we had on Tuesday, uh, you take a look at what they had. We had a couple things going on on Tuesday. Number one, I believe this volume spike here, when you look at middle of the day, was when they came out talking about that they will be raising the prices of Hulu, I believe, at least, if not ESPN, but I know they'll be raising the prices of Hulu by a dollar, not raising the bundle price. Uh, but we also had is you had the movie sales over the weekend. And pretty remarkable that you get Shang-Chi, I believe it's pronounced. Um, now, this is an opinion piece talking about AMC more so um, than Disney itself, but talking about that Shang-Chi, which is the new Marvel movie out this weekend that actually set a box office record. And again, I'm biased. We have the stock, um, but I'm giving you cases of why we do have this stock, folks. The, the brand that Disney has, whether it's Marvel, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and, and, and everything that comes with it, um, are pretty unparalleled in a big way and content's going to be king and you know you think about the amount of characters that disney sells in terms of dolls and, and merchandise and netflix just does not have those types of content brands and it's very difficult to envision a, a future that's guaranteed to exist when you don't have the type of content brands whereas guess what star wars ain't going on anywhere donald duck and mickey mouse ain't going on anywhere marvel definitely isn't going anywhere i mean marvel you look at superhero movies, those are the box office billion dollar movies, those and probably the cartoon movies that Amazon, um, that, excuse me, Disney makes as well. But checking out the numbers, so this one is saying AMC's in trouble because it can't just be all about Disney coming in to save them when they're making movies because that basically you're going to have just Disney being the powerful operator with AMC, which is kind of the case right now. And then, yeah, that's not a sustained recipe for success for AMC. It might be for Disney, though. Um, so you have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, such a hit that it resulted in record admissions revenue for the U.S. Labor Day weekend. Remarkable, even during a pandemic. Now, what could be going on here, though, is that remarkable that people could be potentially not doing what maybe they weren't traveling as much. And so they had more ability. Nonetheless, strong numbers when you look at it. How about 95 million in ticket sales? Um, that movie created in the U.S. and Canada over the four-day weekend. That knocks out a Labor Day record previously set by, can't believe this, The Sixth Sense. Labor Day, not a big movie weekend, I guess, in 1999. Uh, it grossed an additional 50 million in other countries. It's the first real post-pandemic blockbuster, um, you could say. Now, what was, there was the other Scarlett Johansson movie out there that did a bunch of money in theaters and also did a bunch of money in direct sales as well. There's been a couple movies out there. Um, Black Widow, I think maybe that one. 
Um, yeah, so you had it trading higher, of course, and they're just basically talking about that Disney had a 33% share of ticket sales as moviegoers increasingly held out for its superhero blockbusters. There you go. The Labor Day triumph of Shang-Chi offered the latest evidence of how Disney is king of the box office, but if Disney rules the box office, the box office can only win when Disney chooses to be there, right? That's the interesting part. We've had a couple of these movies released directly to streaming as well. Uh, in 2019, that's what I want to get to, these numbers, before COVID upended the theater industry, okay? So this is not about COVID. Disney had one out of every $3. I think in 2019, they had 10 different movies. All of them grossed a billion dollars. 10 different movies and all of them grossed over a billion dollars. Um, they dominated the box office. That's part of the reason why they're now dominating the streaming wars because their brands are so strong. So you have Warner Brothers owned by an AT&T was a distant second place with less than 14% share. Now, things have dramatically changed over the last year and a half, of course. Um, but when you look at the forces with Disney action and adventure films, a category Disney dominates increasingly drive box office sales. Um, comedies, it's not happening, folks. That's now 2019 is blue, 2021 is black. Things are going to change. We'll probably go back to a 2020, uh, excuse me, a 2019 model. Um, but look at where the money is, all right? You're talking about adventure and action. Even drama. I love good dramas. You're talking about only about 12% of ticket sales versus an action adventure, 33, 34%. Now, part of the reason why as well is that I'll go see a great action adventure movie in a movie theater because it's more of an experience, right? It is. You get those big, a drama you might not need to see it on, you know, this, a football size screen in front of a movie theater. Uh, nonetheless, strong numbers, something to consider um, and surprising numbers for the movie out. I mean, that was not one of their biggest movie theater, movie chains. I mean, you think of it as in, it's not like it's a Spider-Man, right? Coming out that they could just do big business it's, it's, uh, itself, excuse me. Um, so $95 million domestically, 50 abroad, uh, and Disney gets an acceleration on that. Disney popping a little bit on the open as well. Now you take a look at Disney where we've been. That 382, we jump around on a couple different occasions. Look how many times it almost came down to that line, right? Frustrating when you're at 203, especially frustrating when you're looking at an S&P that's up, what, 20% this year? And you have Disney in the red for a decent portion of that, but it holds the 382 at about 170, and just since August 20th, you're up about $16. You're up almost 10% on this equity uh, in that run, trading at 186.11. Still some ways to go as we get over the pandemic and really open things back up. Uh, I tell you, with cases where they are in Florida right now, I'm not going to a movie theater. And I had been to one after I got vaccinated earlier this year before this wave. So still factors weighing on ticket sales over in Disney in a big way. All right, what else we got going on? Checking around some of the stories. They're talking about China over there in the YouTube Tigers Den. I got a couple articles over here in China. Why not? We'll pull them up. Uh, yeah. So first, we got traders rush to dump China's tech stocks as gaming's gaming targeted again. Gaming shares leading a broader decline in a skittish market. I would just stay away, folks. And uh, interesting story out here talking. I hadn't really realized it. I don't keep track of President Xi. Um, but 600 days, he has not set foot out of China. A little bit of isolationist. Not what you would want um, if you're looking for positive ties. Um, no indication of anything going on. His health is fine. He's visiting everything in terms of virtually. But something to keep your eye on as they ratchet up the pressure on these companies that she is just sitting in China doing everything remotely. Um, he doesn't need to be making those trips. He's not going to get pressured by anybody. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. It is the longest of any of the G20 leaders there, um, particularly if he avoids the G20 meeting in Rome at the end of October. Um, that's kind of the next big place. If he doesn't show up there, he's just not looking for anything diplomatic, and it wouldn't be surprising. Um, but you got a G20 meeting going on in Rome at the end of October. Uh, you look at the leaders in terms of where they rank and how long. Looks like the Indonesian president out there. It's been a while as well. Mexico hasn't been out of country. Now, this is all kind of distorted by the fact that we're dealing with the COVID pandemic. And the last time she was out of China was just before the lockdowns in China that started uh, and you go all the way down Biden, I guess, 85 days down there over with uh, Macron and Draghi down at the bottom within the last couple of weeks being out of country. All right, folks, let's check back in some of the commodities. We got crude 
negative about 46 cents right now in the 15 minute catching a bid. We were below 68 bucks. Look at that crude market with some volatility. 68.85. Gold's hovering at about 17.95. We'll jump to notes and bonds as we come into this commercial break. We have the 10 year up one tick right now. We jump over to what we're talking about a yield. The yield on the 10 year right now, we're talking about a yield of 1.33%. Uh, the yield on the 10 year right now down about one basis point. Check out the VIX volatility index right now. This market, talk about a relentless market, folks. The VIX giving it up to 1743 on Thursday trading on a short trading week. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. Russell clawing back as well to be flat right now at 2249. Jumping over to the headlines from the ECB. So the headline goes European stocks trim losses as the ECB slows its bond buying. Uh, as I was chatting with Mr. Kevin Hinks to start off the program at about 9.15, uh, what they were talking about here, the ECDB on Thursday decided to conduct purchases at a moderately lower pace than the previous two quarters. Officials also reiterated a pledge to keep the 1.85 trillion euro program running until March of 2022 or later if needed, signaling they're not ready to discuss how and when to end emergency stimulus. The ECB does the obvious and goes for the low-hanging fruits. This isn't the same as tapering. That's, there you go. And that's what Kevin was talking about there. Uh, 
and they talk about individual shares nonetheless. But right now, on the heels of that, you're talking about Europe. When you jump over to Europe, where we're trading right now, you got, uh, come on, the DAX up about a tenth percent, FTSE down one percent right now. Over in Asia, Nikkei down half a percent, Shanghai up half a percent. Hong Kong, Hang Seng, down 2.3%, as though China gaming stocks jumping over to the headline there. And there it is. Hong Kong's Hang Seng index drops 2%. Chinese gaming education shares take a hit. Um, yeah, and Chinese state media reported that two or um, video game firms summoned to meeting with regulators. They're talking about Tencent and NetEase. Um, issues discussed during the meeting, including reminding them of restrictions on game time for children. I mean, you literally got politicians bringing in business leaders and reminding them how to act over there. Just be careful if you're in any of those Chinese equities. Yes, there is a, an opportunity anytime you're dealing with volatility for profits, but uh, so many variables that I cannot quantify in that equation, and I don't like putting my money at risk when there are variables that I cannot quantify. It's just, just, I can't do it. I mean, if I'm gonna quantify it, I'm gonna quantify it to a level that there's probably an absurd level of risk, and I'll look for something a little bit more in my market. As Kevin Hinks had talked about, no damage again. You know, you want action over there? Maybe you go to Las Vegas Sands. Maybe you go to the Win, um, as they both have some action over in China. Except you're dealing with American companies. All right, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He is up with the Tiger Technicians next. Fast Market at 11. Larry Pesavento, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. All this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. <laughs>